Hi everyone, good evening. Good evening everyone, welcome to your own channel 8th, 9th and 10th. Welcome everyone. Good evening Aditi, Rahul, Deepak, Charvi, Gungun. I am fine, how are you? Excited for the session? Me too. Yes, how are you all? Hi Papia, hi Bhagya. Yes, I am perfectly audible and visible. Hi Harshit. Hi Netra, hi Tejus, hi Ashrat, Shruti, present fine, very good, Mo. Hi Ria, hi Ashwarya. Good to see you here everyone, good evening Umar. Hi Fenil, Neharika, Shelja, Mohammed. Then we have Madhulekha, okay, Ayushman, Janvi, yeah. Mahi, Cashew, nice. Sahil. Awesome everyone. So I'll be taking the other names during the session. Welcome to the class everyone. I hope that all of you are doing super amazing and super healthy. And I'm sure that all of you are ready for your exams. That I don't know when they will be happening. But still, we will do our part. We will learn. That's what we can do. Right? So, in today's class, we will be discussing about the three chapters we have in your syllabus. Which is which are of course very interesting chapters, right? We have how do organisms reproduce. We have heredity and our environment. So from these three chapters, we will be discussing about those important topics that are like kind of 100% sure shot ke aayenge hi aayenge in your exams, right? So I hope that all of you are excited. Quickly go and get your notebook and a pen so that you can note down, right? And uh, definitely you can, with the technology we have, you can take a screenshot. And I'll be telling you in between now, I'll move out, take a screenshot and you can do all of these around say. But if you want to write, I would encourage you to. Awesome everyone. You can write, you have that option of writing if you want to. But uh, up to you guys. You can always take a screenshot. Definitely. We will use the advantage over here. Yes, attendance complete. Yes. Okay, before we start the you know, new session, let's quickly congratulate. And let's quickly clap for all of those homeworks rock stars, right? Who took their time and wrote the answers on the previous video that we have. So last time we had the R environment, right? We had discussion about the important questions. And then there were two questions that we asked, right? So we here we have, uh, we have Diksha, we have Gungun, Charvi, Prakar, we have Nikesh, Nikki, then we have Deepshika, we have Preetam, YouTube stats, nice. Right? So we have Rishabh also. Nice that. Very good everyone. So congratulations. Let's put a quick claps for each one of these. Claps, yes. Very good Aditi. Thank you so much for the claps. Okay. Now let's start our session everyone. So on that note, here we go everyone. So first we'll be starting with a very interesting chapter, right? The first chapter that we have. That is how do organisms reproduce. So we will be going really very quick. Because we have 45 minutes and there's another teacher who will be coming up over here. So we have to be really very quick about our session. And I'm 100% sure that you guys will be helping me, right? You'll be answering all the questions really very quickly. So let's start with it. Over here we have the first thing. In the how do organism reproduce, we're starting with the asexual re reproduction. And we all know what asexual reproduction is. Re reproduction where only... There's only one parent, right? Involvement of the one parent. We will see no variation happening. And most importantly, the offspring will be identical to their parents. Yes? Rajdhani keys speed into two. Yes, every definitely. Very good, everyone. And Suhani and Papi, I would request. Let's not talk about any other, other thing. Specifically calling you out. Yes? Let's focus on the class. Very good. Okay. Now, let's talk about the different types of asexual reproduction. So, can you write about the different types of asexual reproduction? Quickly, everyone. Very quickly. So, over here, you can note down again. You can take a screenshot of this or maybe after some time. Yes. Very good. So, can you tell me very different, we have different types of asexual reproduction. Over here, we have different modes. 
we have fission, we have budding, regeneration, fragmentation, spore formation, and vegetative propagation. Let's quickly revise them. So, what is fission? Where well, we will be seeing the fusion, right? From one parent organism, we'll see the formation of the daughter nuclei or the daughter cells. In the case of amoeba, we'll see the binary fission right where the amoeba will split into two and we will see two daughter cells which will be identical to the parent right and that's how we will see the reproduction happening in the case of amoeba and that we have the multiple fission and that happens in the plasmodium right where multiple nuclei will be seen easy then moving to the next everyone remember the example the important thing when we talk about all of these reproductions is to remember the examples fission amoeba leishmania plasmodium for Multiple fission. Budding. Now what is budding? Very quickly, what is budding? Okay. What is budding? Simple, right? We'll see the growth. We'll see the growth of the bud, right? And eventually the bud will mature itself. And of course it will be getting detached from the parent. And we call it as the budding. Over here we have the example of Hydra. And the other example is the East. You can definitely write about that also. Right? Very good. Yes. Very good, Shrishti Fennel. Shruti, Vidanshi, Madhu, Ambika, Khan, Ambika, very good. Yes. Screen is not clear. Just change the settings of your phone, right? I hope it will be better then. Yes, Ananya. Yes. Tofa, Diksha, yes. Absolutely. Okay. Now moving to the fragmentation. We see this in the Spirogera, right? And of course, we will see that. When the spirogera will be getting mature, right, it will just break itself into the various fragments and each of the fragment will be growing into a new individual. That is nothing but the fragmentation. Now, when we talk about fragmentation, we always talk about a very important confusion that we have, that is a regeneration. Now, as we know that regeneration is really a very special type, right, where an organism, if cut by the accident, will be developing into a new individual from each of those pieces. So let's quickly spend some time over here on the difference between the fragmentation and the regeneration because it's a very important question from the exam point of view. It usually comes for two marks. Over here we have the difference between the regeneration and the fragmentation. So definitely you can take a screenshot of it. Okay, first of all you can just take a screenshot of it. It's important. We have what we'll see in the regeneration partially or the complete growth, right? Regrowth of the tissue. And of course, you can write the examples of the planaria, right? I'm sure you're aware about the lizard tail also, starfish hand also. You can mention all of these examples. Whereas when we talk about the fragmentation, every fragment will be growing into a new individual. That's how you can write over here. And of course, you can write about the flatworms, the examples for the spirogera. And that's how you will be getting your two marks. So everyone, are we clear with this? This is super important. Yes. Very good, Puneet. Congratulations. Very good, Diksha. Yes. True regeneration. Very good. Samarth. Yes. Shrishti. Yes. Multicellular organism. Khushi. The lizard tail. Yes. Okay. Uh, everyone, are we clear with this? A thumbs up. Shalvin. Okay. Very good, Ram. Yes. Right? Okay. Great everyone, so let's move ahead, right, and let's quickly move to the next, which is again very important, that is a spore formation. So we here, we know that spore formation is really very important and it's super simple. So we see, we know that we will be observing it in the fungi, specifically if we have that, uh, the example that we have in the book is of mold, which is also called as a rhizopus. So remember that these two names, because sometimes in the examination you might have questions which have these two names, so just be very sure about it. Right, and of course we have the vegetative part which is the hyphae, right, the hyphae will be like this and of course we have the sporangia, inside the sporangia we have the spores, right, and once the sporangia will burst open, it will be releasing the spores and these spores, once they'll be getting the moist surface, will be developing into the new individual, right. So when we talk about the spore formation, remember three things, hypha, that's not so important but still, we, you should remember about the sporangia, Right, you should remember about the name mold and the rhizophus, and it requires a moist surface. So these are really very important. Spores are covered by a thick, very good, yeah, thick coating that which protects them. Yes, absolutely correct. 
जी हाँ वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद दैट एंड यू नो वॉट मोस्ट ऑफ द टॉपिक्स दैट वी यूजली हैव आर सिमिलर इन आई सी एस सी एंड सी बी एस सी बट टू बी वेरी स्पेसिफिक अबाउट दैट जस्ट गिव मी अ मोमेंट माई पेन टेप जस्ट फेल डाउन सो आई विल बी हेयर इन अट या सो रिमेंबर अबाउट दैट दैट आई सी एस सी डू हैव दू नो वेरी सिमिलर टॉपिक सो वंस वी आर कवरिंग ऑल ऑफ दीज वी विल बी डेफिनेटली कमिंग टू द आई सी एस सी awesome very good so i'm i'm sure that we are clear with the spore formation and the last but not the least which is okay is important you uh, like in your examination is the vegetative propagation which talks about the reproduction right if a new organism or a new plant is growing from a different part of the plant be it the root stem or the leaves we call it as a vegetative propagation in that we have different things right so you can remember about those and you will be good to go it's okay anshita welcome to the class okay everyone are we clear with the asexual reproduction right quickly a thumbs up and then we'll move to the sexual reproduction yes jia why jews have got you covered so don't worry very good cool i can see thumbs up chain and let's move to the uh, to the sexual reproduction now in sexual reproduction we know that there's involvement of the two parents there's a fertilization process and then we will see a lot of variation happening right the offspring will be definitely different from their parent they will be having some characteristics from the parent but they will be not the identical copies of their parents and one of the most important thing that we see in the sexual reproduction is the variation right we will see different characteristics different features all together and i'm near high fa right I'll, let me just go back over here so if i'll draw over here this is the high fa right and on top of it we will have the sporangia inside that we will have the spores okay and i'm near this is sorted so yeah high fa and the uh, sporangia so over here we have the definition of sexual reproduction where we'll see the fusion of the male gamete and the female gamete super easy and we call that process as the fertilization okay we don't have menti today but we have an amazing session okay seems like the pen doesn't want me to write yes seems like the 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 class wants no this is the destiny kind of thing that I, i this is not meant for me right i should not be writing this today you should be writing everyone yes it's okay am i ria you have You have joined the class now. Ha, ah, yes. Aaj pen mera saath nahi de raha hai. It's okay. We will manage, right? So we have it involved two parents. Gametes are involved, and of course, we'll see the variation. And let's quickly talk about the different type of male reproductive systems we have, right? We have two genders. We have male and female. And in your textbook, they have mentioned about the two reproductive system. Let's first talk about the male reproductive system. Where we'll see the production of the sperm. So over here, we have the diagram of the male reproductive system. It's not usually asked in the examination to draw it. It might come for you to label the important parts. So important thing we'll be discussing about all of these is to remember the location of the tubes, ducts, etc. So over here we have the male reproductive system, and over here we have the testes where we'll see the production of the sperms. Then we have. the vas deferens the tube that will be carrying the sperms from the testes towards the two gl glands that we have prostate gland and the seminal vesicular gland and from there they will be joining in a duct in that duct will be carrying the urine as well as the sperms out of the body through the penis this really very easy very simple male reproductive system we have so we heard the pathway of the sperms again a very common question asked in the examination is that what is the pathway of the sperms right so it starts from the testis then vas deferens then seminal vesical gland uh, then we have prostate and the urethra so easy pathway now again one of the common question which is asked in the examination and i want you to write in the chat box is that why the testis is present outside the body in the scrotum i'll wait for you to write the answer because it's a very common question asked for two marks and we all should be aware about that come on everyone waiting for your answers yes very good khushi a very good question that you have asked that you know um what is the function of these two glands yes come on come on 
So we have the seminal vesicle gland, right, which will be providing the nourishment of fluid. And of course, we have the prostate gland, which will be helping the sperms to move further. And of course, both of these provide the nutrition. And of course, these just help in the lubrication also. A very quick two points. Pro provide the nutrition. That's how we can put it into the words. To maintain the low temperature, because sperms require... Very good, yes. Everyone know the reason that's absolutely important for all of us to know that the function of the scrotum is to maintain the temperature which is 2 degrees lower than the whole body temperature that is required for the production of the sperms. That's why the testes are present in the scrotum which is outside the body. Remember everyone this is important. Okay. So this is a very important point you should remember. And now let's move to the female reproductive system. Right. So I think, Kushi, uh, you got the answer. Oh, th this question was there in your prelims. Okay. Shubhansh, how was your paper? Good. So are we clear with the male reproductive system? And now let's move to the female reproductive system. I think uh, few of you have asked about the diagram for it. Again, the diagram of the female reproductive system is definitely easier than the male reproductive system, but it's more complex in terms of the different parts and the function. Let's talk about the female reproductive system. So in female, uh, we have the ovaries, right? Where we'll see the formation of the eggs or the ovum. Once these eggs are, once every month, one egg is released. It's important. It's not that it is releasing three or four eggs every month. Only one egg is released from the ovary and it will be moving into the fallopian tube. Now the fallopian tube is also called as the oviduct. Yes, I hope that all of us are aware that fallopian tube is also called as the oviduct. So fallopian tube performs two important functions. One is to receive the egg, right, from the ovary and then it will be carrying it further to the uterus. Apart from that, one of the most important functions of the fallopian, fallopian tube or the oviduct is that this is where we will see the fertilization happening. That is a fusion of male and the female gamete. Yes. Very good. Very good, everyone. Okay. Now we have this, right? We have talked about the uh, fallopian tube. Now let's move ahead. What will happen to the other different organs that we have? Let's quickly discuss it. So once the fertilization done is, is done, right, that is a fusion of the male and the female gamete, we will see the formation of the zygote. And this zygote will be moving from the fallopian tube to the uterus. And in the uterus, it will be getting implanted, right? It will be getting implanted. And once it is implanted in the uterus, right, the growth will occur slowly, slowly. And in the human body, it almost takes about nine months for a baby to grow. Right, from the zygote to a grown individual, right? So this is a very important place and uterus is also called as the womb. Important. Then we have the cervix and the vagina through where the sperms will be entering into the female reproductive system. Now, if there's no formation of the zygote, what will happen? The thick lining of the uterus, right? It will, it will have the blood lining. And if there's no fertilization of the egg, what will happen? These blood lining will be shedding them. And we call that process as the menstruation, right? It occurs once in a month. Yes. So it's again a very important thing for us to remember this. Very simple thing. Very good, Kushi. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Thank you, Om, for answering that. Very good, Germany. Okay, the function of the vas deferens, uh, Fatima, is to carry the sperms from the testis to the different glands, right, that we have discussed about, the accessory glands. Uh, Mira, the function of the placenta is to provide the nutrition, right, it is, it's there, it will be getting attached, right, and over here, it will have small villi, and these villi will be actually helping in the exchange of nutrient waste from the mother's body to the fetus, developing fetus. Everyone, are we clear about it? Yes? So I think we are clear with the female reproductive system. A very quick thumbs up will help me and we will move ahead. Ananya will be discussing about the mitosis and meiosis a little bit later. Right? Uh, so just need a quick thumbs up from all of you. Very good, Tanishka, Arushi, Sia. A lot of new kids. Yes. Okay. Ishant. 
Yes, we do that. Very good. Okay. Hi, Kashish. Sophia is new. Nice. Very good. So let's get started, everyone. So we are done with the female reproductive system. And finally, this chapter is over. And now we are moving to the heredity. Right? Before we go into the heredity, right, can you just tell me what heredity is? We will not be having, as of now, the session on the evolution because it's not the part of your curriculum. You will not be having the, you know, the, that, that particular topic in your examination. So we don't want to take you that time. But in the future, definitely we'll be discussing about the evolution. It's really a very interesting topic. We will be covering the STDs. Okay, yeah. So thank you, Kushi, for reminding me. Uh, in, your, in your examination, they might ask you for the sexually transmitted diseases, right? And the different barrier method that can be used. So you can actually go back to the video where we have discussed about that in detail and that will be helping you. Yes, Kushi, covered up that. Yes, very good everyone. I can see the transmission of the characters of, or traits. Heredity is the transfer of the characters to the, from the parent to the children. Absolutely correct. So we have the idea what heredity is, right? And let's quickly take a proper definition over here. So heredity is nothing but the passing of the traits from one generation to the next generation, right? And of course, of the parents to their offspring and we have the variation which is the difference of the characteristics that we see within the species for example if i will talk about your parents and you you might have different characteristics right you do have the genes from both of your parents but you are not identical to them you have some characters from your father some from your mother maybe some from your grandparents also so that is the variation and because of the variation we keep on evolving as a humans or the any other species yes so honey we are discussing the important topics and we're just covering all the three chapters we have in our bio examination yes everyone it's really very interesting absolutely correct okay now let's move to the one of the important topic that you we will be discussing again and again and many of us usually get confused over here that is the character and the trait so when we talk about the character, right, we know that any heritable feature is called as character, right? Hair, color, right? Hairs basically, having hair, having the eye color, right? That's a character. Now which specific eye color I have, that will be the trait. Simple as that, right? So there's a difference between the character and a trait. I want all of you to have a clear understanding about what is a character and what is a trait, right? Height can be a character, right? A person can be tall, a person can be short, a person can be a medium height, right? That's a character. But what trait it has, is it, is it tall or is it short, right? Or is it dwarf? That all is the trait. Yes? Very good. Right, everyone? So are we clear with this? Yes, we haven't discussed about the uh, flower sexual reproduction. Because it's not as important as the other topics that we are covering over here. If you have any doubts, you can go back to the video and definitely you can see it. Yes. Yeah. That we had, so you can always go back and see that. That will be really very helpful for us. Awesome. So are we clear with these important points? And I think you're asking about what are alleles, right? So if I if I draw this DNA... Right, we have the DNA in our cells, right, which carries the genetic information. Now, if you talk about this particular segment, right, it might be carrying the gene for the hair color, right, for the hair color. Now, this small fragment of the DNA is called as the genes, right. So, we will get one gene from our parent, from the father, and one from the mother. These could be different, right. So, the alternative form of the gene is called as allele, right, it could be any form. For example, if you're talking about the hair color, it could be black hair color or it could be brown hair color, specifically talking about the eye color, green, blue, etc. Yes, so everyone, are we clear with this? Yes, are we clear with this, everyone? Uh, Tan may have talked about the uh, allele, crystal clear, very good, Kushi, very good. I've mentioned that, you know, you can go back to the video for the... Uh, flower sexual reproduction, we'll quickly discuss about it in the end of the class, right? If you want, we can quickly, we'll be discussing about that in the end of the class. Just give us some time. Clear? Very good. Awesome. 
Now let's move to the important part of the heredity that actually scares us off, right? And that is the, can you write? The laws, right? The laws that we have, the cross, and that's usually come in our examination and we tend to get confused while solving the question specially. So let's look at the mono-hybrid cross. Now mono of course means one, so if a particular cross talking about only one particular character, right? We will call it as a mono-hybrid cross and super easy over here. Now, in the mono-hybrid cross, we have one character and over here we have an example of the height. We have a tall plant which will be representing by the capital T and the capital T. The capital T, the capital alphabet represents the dominating character that will be suppressing the other one. Then we have the small t, small t which is the definitely the recessive character right over here. And once the cross will be done, we'll see the gametes formation. And in the F1 generation, we'll have all plants which are tall. And this is how you can make the punit square in your examination. Yes. Very good. Right, everyone? So this is easy, right? We have this F2 generation. So we have this. In F1 generation, we have that all the plants are tall, right? But they are heterozygous because they have two different types of allele. Homozygous means same type of allele. Simple, important thing for us to remember. In F2 generation, right, when there's a selfing of the capital T and small t with the capital T and the small t, we will see that the recessive trait will come out only with its self. Small t and small t will be able to express itself. The small t or the dwarf character will not be able to express itself in the presence of the capital letter or basically the dominating allele. Are we clear with this? And this is nothing but the law of dominance. Yes, very good, Diksha. Yes, everyone, are we clear with this? Right? Monohybrid cross. I can see a question that your exam were there. They asked you to write the phenotype and the genotype. Phenotype and the phenotypic ratio of F1. Very good. So over here we have the ratio, right? The phenotype, when we tell about it, it's basically the thing that we can actually see, right? And when we talk about the ratio, you have to actually tell out of four, what are what is the chances of one having a particular character? So we talk about the phenotypic ratio for the monohybrid cross. We have three is to one. That means the three plants are tall, and one plant is dwarf. Whereas the genotypic speci specifically talk about the whether they are homozygous or they are heterozygous. That means that we have over here. If we look over here, we have one, which is capital T and capital T, right? We have two heterozygous with capital T and small t and we have one which is homozygous, small t and small t. So the genotypic ratio which talks basically talk about the genetic makeup they have, right? Whereas the phenotypic ratio are the one that when we see them, that's how we can actually identify them, right? So are we clear with the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio? The phenotype, right? And phenotypic ratio. Again, I've expressed it like when you talk about the physical character, that's a phenotype. When you're talking in terms of the ratio, right, out of four, how many are tall or how many are short, you will be helping, you know, you will be using an expression to solve it with the help of the phenotypic ratio. I hope that, Charvi, uh, your doubt is clear. Yes? Very good, Diksha. Genotype means a genetic makeup. Absolutely correct. Are we clear with that? Tanmay, Rekha, awesome. Meera, thank you so much. Yes. It's great that you guys ask the doubts, right? It's really very important for the learning process. Richita, very good. Awesome. Now that we have the confidence on monohybrid cross, let's go, let's move towards the dihybrid cross, right? In dihybrid cross, we'll have two characters, right? We'll be discussing about two important characteristics. Over here, we have round yellow seed. And over here, we have green wrinkled seed. So two important characteristics. First, of course, we're talking about the color of a seed and the shape, right? So we have these parents, capital R, capital R, and capital Y, and capital Y, and small r, and small y. We'll break it into gametes like this, right? And of course, we have a first generation, right? This is a gamete that we have. Now, of course, this is a dominating trait. Now, if we do the selfing of it, we will get this amazing square, which looks really, very really scary. But you should have confidence when you are doing this, right? Remember to get this right. Capital R, small r, capital Y and small y. This should be the after the gametes or when they are segregated. You will get this and you will be doing the selfing of this and then you will get the answer. Easy, right everyone? 
Yes? It is super easy. Yeah, Ashwarya, I agree with you. It is easy. Awesome, you can practice and you definitely will get it. And we have this extra generation which is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. 9 are the one which are round and yellow. 3 are the one which are kind of green and yellow shape, right? They're, the color is uh, green but the shape is round. Then we have these one where the color is, you know, the wrinkled one is there. And of course the color is green. Uh, and of course last may we have the wrinkled one with the green color. Super easy, right? Siddharth, you don't have to learn the table, bache. You can easily draw it by yourself. Right? You can practice it for Aram. Say it's really very easy. First mention about all of these gametes, right? Capital R, capital Y on both the sides. Here and here. Capital R, small y. Capital Y and small r and small r and capital Y. You write on the both the sides and then you just take these and make it into four. Write this properly and it will be easy. Viswajit, you have to tell me what is the genotype because genotype of dihybrid cross is really very long. You can stop spamming over here, but you can find the answer and you can write in the chat box, right? Meera, these are the two different characteristics that, you know, Mendel actually took, right? So when you talk about the dominating trait and the recessive trait, so we have these, the positioning of the flower on a plant. Very good. Oh, I can see someone have written 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 4, 1 is to 2, 1 is to 2 is to 1. Very good. Awesome, everyone. So, are we clear with this? Yes, so are we clear with this, right? So, we are clear with the dihybrid cross. Now, let's quickly re revise. We have actually seen the cross, all the laws, but let's quickly look at the laws we have. You can definitely take a screenshot of this one because we have all the three laws together. We have the law of dominance, which talks about when a parent is pure, the contrasting trait are crossed together. Only one of the trait form, which is dominant, will be expressing in the next generation. And this will be inhibiting the expression of the recessive trait. Then we have the law of segregation, where we'll see that during the formation of gametes, each gene will separate out, right, from each other. And they will be carrying their own when allele of each gene. Simple. And then we have the last law that is a law of independent assortment, a super important law, right? That alleles of two or more genes will get sorted into the gametes independently, right? You remember I gave you the example of your best friend, right? So you can recall that, right? Even if you are best friends, right? Maybe one of you want to study engineering or the other wants to go to learn something about, you know, journalism. So it will be interesting, right? Definitely you both are best friends. So it will not be changing anything over there. You can independently express yourself. And that's the law of independent assortment. So this is how you can write it in your examination. You have it the proper format, the proper statement that we have. Very good, Biswajit. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Everyone, Biswajit have, you know, uh, have shared the genotype of the dihybrid cross. So you guys can look it over there. Very interesting question. How traits are related to genes? Genes are the one that will be giving us a particular trait. For example, the hair color gene, right, is there. And of course, that particular hair color gene will be giving me black hair color. And the black hair color is a trait. Yes? It happens. Bhagya, yes. So everyone, are we clear with this? Uh, Shrishti, stomatic cells are the cells that we have in our body, right? The skin cells. So when we talk about the different types of cells, we have different types. We have the gametes, the, the germ cell, the sperms and the ovum and the rest of the body. We have the somatic cells, right? Shristi, I hope I have answered your question. Hi, Tejasvi, Prakash, hello. You can stop spamming now. Yes, everyone. Yes, we have these Mendel's law, which we have on the screen. We have just discussed it. Yes, everyone, so are we clear with that? When we talk about the chromosomes, right, we call it as a two different types of chromosomes. We have autosomes, which are present in these stomatic cells, like all the different types of body cells. In skin cells, brain cells, etc., we have the autosomes, right. And of course, we have sex chromosomes, right, specifically the sex chromosomes. So basically, when I talk about the autosomes, they are the one out of 23, right, the 22 are the autosomes, whereas the one pair is a sex chromosome. Okay, talking about the chromosome, let's talk about the sex determination, 
right? So we know that in males we have sperm and in females we have the ovum. When we talk about the sperms, right, and the male reproductive system, we talk about that they have X and Y chromosome. So one sperm can have X, there are millions of sperms, so can they, they can have a mix of X and Y, right? And during the fertilization process, they will fuse with the female egg, which has the X. So it will be the father who will be deciding whether the gender, what will be the gender of the next generation, right? So we should not be blaming the females for it. This is an important thing for all of us to remember. And you can, you know, you can spread this awareness in your surrounding. Okay, so are we clear with the sex determination? You can, you can, can easily get a question on this particular topic. Yes, everyone? So are we clear with this? Come on, come on, come on. Five more minutes with us. Ten more minutes, actually. Okay, are we clear with this, everyone? Okay. Right? Awesome. So with this, we can say that we are done with the heredity part, right? And we will be moving to the next chapter, which is our environment. And of course, we will be starting with the food chain and the energy flow that is really, really important from the this particular chapter. So what is a food chain? We all know a sequence, especially the linear sequence, sequence where we'll see the transfer of the matters and energy happening from one organism to the another. Ananya, thank you so much, right? It's because of the radiation, right? Because of the atomic bomb, right? It actually emits the radiation. And because of that, it kept on going from, from one generation to the next generation. So it, it actually got in, actually has affected their DNA, right? And that's how the things got worse. Okay. Over here we have the definition of the food chain. And over here we have the 10% law. So only 10% of the energy will get transferred from one tropic level to the another tropic level. We all know what tropic level uh, we have, right? We have different tropic level. From where the energy will be moving from the one tropic level to the another, we have producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumer, and so on, right? Very good. So this is important, 10% energy law. So if you start from the sun, sun will be giving some energy to the plants. And when the plants take up that energy, only 10% will be moving further, right? 90% of it will be getting lost in the various different metabolic activities. Right? Very good. Then, of course, a very another important term we have is a biological magnification. If you take an example of a water body, and if there's a farmers who are using the pesticide or the fertilizers, if they keep on polluting the water, what will happen? The toxins that are there in the pesticide and the fertilizer will be going deep down into the aquatic life, right? Into the plants. They'll be consumed by the bigger animal. They'll be consumed by the more bigger animal. And if we eventually eat a fish, or any of the aquatic animals, what will happen? We will be accumulating the toxin in our body and that is nothing but the biological magnification. Yes, we will be discussing about the ozone and it's different. Just give us a while. Hi. Hi, Aman Meer from Kashmir. Awesome. Good to see you here. Very good, uh, Kushi. Yeah, DDT. Amazing. Nice. Yes, we'll be discussing about it. Okay, so that's the biological magnification. You can take this definition for sure. And now comes the ozone. So can you tell me what is ozone? Yes, what is ozone, right? It's a protective membrane or it's a protective layer that we have. Um, that we have on our, you know, over there on our, surrounding our earth. That actually protect our earth from the harmful UV rays that comes from the sun. These UV rays are not good for us and for other organisms that we have on our planet Earth. That's why we have the ozone. <coughs> right? Talking about the ozone formation, a very important thing, the formula for the ozone is O3. So we have oxygen in our atmosphere, right? And once these will see the strike of the sun rays, right? This oxygen molecule will be getting into split. We will see the oxygen atom like this. And they, when they combine with O2, they'll be forming O3. Please repeat this. Right over here. Can you see this reaction? It's really very important. So we have ozone, which actually acts as a protecting membrane, right? A protecting layer to our earth. It actually protects us from the harmful UV radiation. And over here, we have the formation. A very common question asked in the examination, write the formation of the ozone. And this is how you can write 
okay everyone are we clear with this please note this down kindly note the equation down right when we talk about the ozone and the causes of it so we know that ozone depletion is caused by the CFC the chlorofluorocarbon right and over here we have the various materials that actually cause the ozone depletion and if there's ozone depletion definitely right it can affect the humans the animals and plants right so it can affect us it can cause cancer skin cancer it can cause aging hair damage DNA damage and of course can weaken the immune system and can affect the eye also yes everyone so are we clear with this so are we, see we have covered all the important topics that we have right we have discussed about the all the three important chapters very quickly let me discuss about the sexual reproduction in flower right so in sexual reproduction in flower we have flower we have we have the anther which is attached with the filament and anther produce the pollen grains and pollen grains will be transferring from one flower to another and it will be sitting on the stigma of the you know, pistil, the female reproductive system and then there's a style through which the pollen tube will grow and will be moving into the ovary right and of course there the fertilization process will take place this is important for us to remember right yes everyone are we clear with this so the heart you can stop typing that are we clear androsium and gynosium yes absolutely right okay hi yes right and after that we'll see the fertilization happening there's double fertilization because there's a fusion there's two time fusion will be happening one with the male gamete right with the egg that is called the syngamy where the proper fertilization is happening and then we have one more gamete which will fer fertilizing with the polar nuclei and that's how we call it as a triple fusion super easy okay so that we cannot say o3 is bad right it's o3 it's ozone it's good only right it's protect it's providing us the protection so it's good kindly stop writing that yes okay then let's talk about the mitosis and meiosis so we have two different types of cell division let's talk about the mitosis if I talk about the mitosis right we have a cell it will be dividing into two and over here what we'll see we'll see that they're the exact copy of their parent right we see the mitosis happening in the different body parts the exact copy will be there whereas in meiosis we'll see the reduction of the chromosome numbers this is important in meiosis we have a cell which has let's suppose 46 we will see it, it will be getting reduced first of all to half that is 23 and 23 right so it's a very brief uh, very brief introduction about what meiosis and mitosis is we have a detailed uh, you know I have explained this in a detail in the previous video so you can definitely go uh, and see it over there yes yes awesome so are we clear everyone with this uh, I think we have covered up all the important points then of course in the environment we have a very interesting topic which is super easier three important hours I'm sure you be you know you remember that we saw I did a small video for that three important hours right reuse reduce and recycle remember that so it's important for it can be easily asked in the examination it's super easy we have biodegradable ways that can be easily decomposed by the microorganisms whereas non-biodegradable ways such as plastic which will take ages and cannot be broken by or decomposed by the various microorganisms right <coughs> yes clear everyone so we have these three hours you mentioned in your textbook but yeah we have like when we talk about it there are five hours yes recycle the first is reuse then uh, reduce reduce reuse and recycle yes everyone so I hope everything uh, is cleared from our side right tomorrow again we'll be meeting we will be discussing about the case based question and yeah it will be super fun we have got you covered the important thing what you can do is that if you feel that you need a specific session or a specific discussion on any particular topic I would request you to write in the comment section below after the video right that would be really very good so that I want you to find the answer for how O3 is deadly poison right tomorrow we'll be meeting so I want you to find the answer for that so yeah everyone so we have a homework question which is given by Siddharth right how the O3 is deadly uh, deadly poison right find the answer right in the comment section below super fun right 
Apart from that, you know what you can do? You can find the a very interesting question that I always have in my mind. It's about the uh, you know placenta function. You can write that. Write the functions of the accessory glands, right? I think you you have asked about them. So I want you to write the three answers. If you remember, write two also. So homework for today, everyone. First, why or why the O3 is deadliest poisonous, right? We can write that. Mention we can add that. Then uh, you can write about the I forgot what I said. You can write about the uh, the function of placenta and the function of the accessory glands that we have in the male reproductive system. Planktons are the small plants which are there in the uh, water bodies, right? The, these are the aquatic uh, plants, really, really tiny. Awesome, everyone. So we have got you covered. I don't have to say this again and again. You have shown that trust on us, so I'm super happy with that. Awesome, everyone. On that note, we will finish our class. You can go on the description box below. There's a link for the free class. You can definitely try that. Everyone, are we clear with that? Give me a thumbs up and a smiley. And then I'm off from here. Yes, amazing session. Thank you, Gungun. You guys were, I can say, 100% prepared. You should, you can actually write the exam tomorrow only. I have the trust on you guys. Awesome, lots of love to you. Come on, let's have a smiley chin. Why Utkash, why so confused? Yes. Thank you so much, everyone. For coming up here, you are actually my energy. We will not be having menti. We will be, you know, we will be coming up with something really, very really interesting and super exciting for you. Yay, awesome. Everyone, I'll take a uh, bye from here. The other teacher is waiting. I'll see you tomorrow at 7. Remember that. We have amazing questions planned for all of you. See you everyone. Bye-bye.